Have you guys played around Chicago before? Yeah, we played Shubas a couple times. Um, we played earlier this year. It was the first time we ever actually sold out a show in the States. So that was, or the first time in Chicago at least. So it was really exciting. We've always had like a pretty good connection. Um, yeah, I'm, they were one of our first shows we ever played in the States was Chicago, so. I think it was the biggest show of that tour was in Chicago, it was great. I know that you guys have been through a couple of members. Um, is there a reason for that, or? I'm, a, I'm an asshole, so it's hard to keep people around that like me uh, long enough to tour with, so that's. That said, this lineup has been the longest, it, it's a few years, so. This has yeah. been at least like four years with Mike and I, and then Evan and I. Really, when I started the band, um, it was more just as like an open door policy. If you could come to practice, you know, you could come and be in the band until you couldn't show up to practice, or if you could play a few shows here and there. So we went through a lot of members at at first, but really the core has been this for uh, for the longest that, that any other members have changed out. So this is how we consider the band and have for a long time. I read some stuff online about you between music careers doing gold mining. When we were a, still, before we had any records out or anything, we had been a band for a few years. And I moved up north about 10 hours from where we were situated. Um, I was just out of money and I had an opportunity to go up and there was a gold rush going on in northern Ontario. And I, could, uh, I couldn't get a job at home so I just went up there. And I, it was only supposed to be for a few months to get money and come back and keep touring. but. Things always are uh, never plan out the way that you think they're going to, so I ended up staying for a th few years, and Mike ended up singing in Single Mothers for a while, and uh, the band had a few changes, and we almost broke up at that. We did break up at that point, basically. At some point, we said, announced that we had broken up, and then uh, that job was fun, but it's very lonely, so I came back to do the band. Can you tell us a little bit about yourselves? Um, as a band, we are four nerds playing music and shit at the doors of hell. You guys are all pretty young, you're like our age. How did you guys get started with music and how did you guys meet? Uh, we met when she had born. <laughs> and I met him when we were 12 or 11, I can't remember. Her and me started playing because there was a music school in our town that just opened that year. so. Uh, she wanted to play bass, and I started playing drums. And I don't know, a few years later, I started learning guitar by myself. I started when I was uh, eight years old. Just my father got my first drum kit, and I just started kind of like uh, listening to songs and you know the rhythms and just that the typical thing when you start drumming somehow. Do you think that your age limits the stuff that you're able to write? I'm not sure. I think uh, no, but maybe we talk about mm, things that only concern, I mean, us as a young people, I guess. But no, at the time of uh, writing songs, it's something natural and you, I don't think our age has nothing to do. Well, thank you for your time. <laughs> uh, we love having you. Um, Thank you. We wish you the best. Cool. All right. Thank you. Well, could you tell us some of the, um, maybe your musical influences? Musically, I think there are a lot of things that influence us. Definitely a lot of bands from the late 90s in the Midwest, like Raina Maria or Braid. Um, I think we really pull a lot of influences from those early emo bands. Um, but I mean, otherwise, I think that lyrically, I'm really just so into Kendrick Lamar right now <laughs> and figuring out any way to translate that to anything that I do is just, you know, just maybe having a great sense of the rhythm of words and sounds and saying something really important and meaningful and also making it fun um, with a rhythm you can dance to. Who here at Pitchfork are you most excited to see? The Julie Ruin. I saw them just a little bit ago. Um, Kathleen Hanna has been a huge influence on the way that I view the music scene and independent scenes and just um, being part of a community that really cares about other people and making your band and your songs more than just 
songs that you wrote, but making it a collaborative piece among everybody in your community. At what age did you start getting into music, or more like your style of music? My dad is a professional piano player. Um, he's very accomplished. He plays the blues piano. Um, and when I was a kid, my parents would take me to piano lessons, and I don't know, it just, it just didn't click for me, maybe. It felt like something that they were asking me to do. I'd go to my lesson. I was always like 10 minutes late because I would drag my feet the whole time. It was really difficult to get me to practice. And then I think when I was in middle school, um, I started listening to Ben Queller a lot. I don't know if you guys like that guy. But um, he has a couple of really great songs that are written on the piano. And one day I just kind of went back to it and played an open mic at the Old Town School of Folk Music on Armitage and met some people, joined a band, and then, you know, it just sort of happened. It was like, wait a minute. And then, of course, like, all the regret comes in of, like, why didn't I pay attention in my lessons? So you, like, start learning your instrument over again at 13 or something. We are 826SHY. Um, we know you're involved a lot with chance and the social experiment. Uh, so can you tell us about uh, what it was like to collaborate on surf? As far as surf, like uh, the long process, we sat in the studio for a long time. Pretty much learned a lot. It's just writing music, making it grow from one smaller scale to a larger scale. Mm -hmm. For surf, how did you guys decide to make it a free album? If I was to think about it, it's like we kind of gave a gift to, to people, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's free, you know. You can't really put a price on stuff like that, I guess. What was your role on Surf specifically? Like, what was what, what were you doing uh, on the album? Well, the funny thing about that is that a lot of us, you know, Nate, Donnie, Chance, me, even Sticks, like, we all switched a lot of roles. Like, we did stuff we wouldn't normally do or would do or we, what we had to learn about to do or, like, I mean, I play keyboards, but I also arranged and produced. I sung. I have vocals, places, same thing for everybody. Well, who do you think takes charge the most in the songwriting? Uh, all the songs are pretty much a collaborative effort, so we just all had our little input and it came together. What types of upcoming projects are you working on? Are you thinking about working on with different artists? Well, you know, all of us are still doing songwriting and producing on our own. You know, I want to work with a lot of other artists that were on surf and expand with those artists too. Thank you. Yeah, oh, no really problem. appreciated it. Yeah, yeah. Good luck to you guys on your writing journal. Thank you. That's Thank awesome you. that you guys are doing this. Thanks so Thank much. You. Peace out. Nathan. <laughs>